Look what's happening. First tillage of the year is gonna get out of the way, hopefully. Might be too slimy today, might have to start tomorrow. But this whole bean field here is covered in manure. We don't want to chisel plow, so we're gonna run the field cultivator over it. I just pulled this out today, got it serviced up. Not much to do on it, just gotta grease it up. But yeah, I gotta touch your dog, I gotta hook the hydraulics up. Alrighty, Dad's gonna go make his first pass. That's a 2 plus 2 anyway. Now this thing, this thing will bog down this 2 plus 2 if you sink it in all the way. How deep are we going? I think we're going a couple. Oh, it's pretty deep. About as deep as what we need to go, probably. Maybe a bit deeper. Mm. We're going down about half a foot. Maybe not that much. A good five, four to five, five inches. Yeah, this cultivator will make this tractor work if you sink it in all the way. It'll kill it. If you have the wings folded up, it'll pull it no problem, but not when the, with the wings folded down. If you sink it in all the way, she's going to bog down. So yeah, especially in wet spots, she'll just spin out, obviously, but yeah. Dad, I think, was more worried about it plugging up. Yeah, March 16th today, I think, is the date. Let me find out here. Oh, come on. I'll get back if you want to figure out what the date is. Oh, it's okay. It's the 16th. So yeah, we have finally started good work for the 2020 crop season. It's not gonna con that's not gonna last that long today, I'm sure, but we'll see. Probably be out here more tomorrow since it'll be sunny tomorrow. I don't know. It depends what he says. Talk to him when he gets back here. There we are. Well, he plugged up once already. But I think it's because there's a manure clump there. I don't know. It's the only thing about running this field cultivator before the chisel plow. We're not gonna run the chisel plow in this field, but run the field cultivator over ground we spread manure on. Usually it'll plug up that fuel cultivator, but this is only our third year one on this machine, this tool. Bought it back in 2018 and made one of my first videos on it. You can go watch that, I don't remember what it's called, I think it was like New Purchase or something, but it's the second video I made. You can go back and look at that if you wish. So yeah, I'll see if I get any time in there today. Most likely not, but we'll see what happens. All right, day two. It just got too wet yesterday, so Dad quit. He's back at it again. He's been going for probably, I don't know, about an hour. A little puff of small cloud, two plus two. Looks like he's not pulling too hard. Yeah, I think we're just gonna do this field for now. All the other fields, well, that field over there still has corn in it. That field needs to be dried, needs to dry out more so it can be disked because there's still corn. Actually, no, never mind. That field does not have to be disked. That field just needs manure on it. 
It's the other field, the other side of the interstate over there. We call Schwartz's field. That one needs to be disked. What's well, left of corn stalks on there? I guess I might have to do some disking out here. I think there's still some corn stalks out here that haven't been chopped. And then obviously up over there in Moons, what we call that field. The field behind the farm here, it's about 43 acres if I remember right. And then Moons over there is like 30 something. Schwartz's, the whole entire field is like 40. This cornfield here is, I don't know, like 90 something. And then I think the hay field's like another 70, roughly. It was supposed to be 65, but Uncle Ben planted a bit, he planted like a pass or two more than he was supposed to, so. It's between 65 and 70 acres, don't know for sure. The GPS will say one and Dad's phone will say another, so. Between 65 or 70. In there somewhere. Just, well, the steers are behind me trying to escape on my watch. You're supposed to do that when I'm not watching! Yeah, no, they don't care. They're gonna escape now. See so, ya. Yeah, up over here is the old dairy cow pasture. Cow, there, well, let's see. When the house was built up there, that was the last, before the house was built, was the last time we were up here, which was like. Oh, I don't know, winter, spring of 2014 or winter of 2013, I don't know, honestly, but haven't had any cattle up there since. I like to put more cattle out back in the woods. The field, there's a field on the other side of the house here. That's part of this field. I like to run the fence back to the woods back there and put cattle back up there. I think Brant would like to do that too, just give these guys something to do. Because they don't have any trees to sit under in this five acre pasture lot here. And the cows, the cows were able to go up in the woods there, which is like five acres. But Brant's got his four-wheeler trails in there now. Here comes Dad back again. This is some actually pretty good soil here. Dad was intended to do no-till in this field, but the manure clumps are just, there's just too much manure clumps in here. On the other side of the house over here, though, there's like a little six-acre patch. He's going to do no till on because that manure is spread lightly enough, so it's going to get loud because the exhaust is pointing on this side, so. I don't know where he's going now. I think he's pretty much got this front half here done. So yeah, Let's see where he goes now. All right, we made it back in the cab of the two plus two. This is actually where a couple videos ago I was spread manure. Same tractor, same field, same spot. Now I'm doing tillage. Yeah, so we know back there is dusty. There's nothing I can do about that. It is still wet. But dry enough to go. As you can see, there's mud collected on the wheels. Not on the front wheels or back wheels, but on the field cultivator itself, which is kind of what it always does. But I gotta leave a pass there to get up in the woods to get wood. And do other stuff up in the woods. That they are gonna leave. Not gonna till it. That's gonna be no till. So yeah. I could probably get this field done today if I don't have traction problems. But yeah, she's going good. I'm only running around 18, 1900 RPMs at the moment. That's all it needs. Yeah. It's going good as of now, but now that I say that, something's going to happen. I just know it. It's just the way my luck always is. But this is going to be the only nice day this week. So yeah, get some stuff done while we can. Great, great day to get some tilts done, I guess. Alright, so we're going to do this clip here again with the throwback. The throwback videos. Throwback clips. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this in the last video. I know it wasn't the best video, because Dad had the phone vertical, not horizontal, but whatever. That was years ago. So the next clip is going to be me uh, me and Dad in our 886 with our new Holland 499 hay bind. One of our new Holland 499 hay binds we had at the time. Cutting hay 
I don't know what crop it was, but I know it was 2013. I was roughly nine years old. Was I nine years old? No, I was only like eight and a half, something like that. So yeah, it was. This was. We haven't. We only had the track like half year after that. I don't. I think we had the interior kit in it in it at that time, but it, the tractor when we bought it was widened out all the way. So I think it was still widened out all the way in this video, but I won't make a difference. We're in the cab, so you're gonna get to hear what I sounded like back in 2013. I've changed a lot. That hasn't changed at all. Sorry about that. And yeah. So hopefully you guys enjoy these clips. If you don't, let me know. If you do, also let me know. And if you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up and hit the subscribe if you keep coming back and watch these videos. Because if you keep coming back, obviously you like the videos, you like the content. So you should hit the subscribe button so you can stay around for more. Thanks for watching. Not today. Well, I'm going to the trap today. 